Hello and welcome back to War Thunder. This is now a bonus video about the Tandem Mai, which is the first reward premium plane for the 2018 World War II Chronicles events in War Thunder. And it leads on to also the Whirlwind. And the question is if this plane by default is worth it, if it's something special and unique. Well, first of all, the shape, the form, the look of it is rather strange for this rank 1 battle rating 2.0 attacker. So um, the front section might look like a really capable fighter and you have some offensive armament with four machine guns, light machine guns, mind you, with 2,400 rounds. But if you then compare it to the remaining Soviet tech tree at this um, rank or battle rating, you finally re uh, you really fast realize this is nothing special. So um, all the other reward planes were something special. The MBR-2M34 is a float plane with two gunners, even heavier bomb loads um, to 250 kilograms instead of just to 100 kilogram max for the tandem Mai. Um, so it's a float plane. It's really nice to have. It's one of the few float planes for the Soviets at all. I think the also premium Catalina is one of them. Um, furthermore, the I-301 is very powerful as a fighter. So is the I-29, you know, with the armament and all this. And with our flight performance. So then we also have some additional attackers and we look into this folder. The BB-1 has also four machine guns but with 3400 rounds and has more bomb load and also a gunner and seems to be just more flexible, more maneuverable in the air. Uh, the Su-2 M5 the same and the M82 as well. Just the TSS-1 has less ammunition but it also has less guns, however it still has a gunner and it also has more bomb load at the same battle rating. So it's up to you what you choose. Now I'm not quite sure if some of them were removed uh, some time ago but this is what I have. So the Tandem Mai is, for me personally, nothing but a collector's item. If you look at the armor, we just have a 8.5mm plate behind the pilot seat. In the X-ray, we can see here the gunner um, in the huge tail section of this plane and also the pilot. And then there is also this engine, which is very fragile, gets hit by a uh, arm. Um, yeah, flak very very easily and takes a lot of damage. Even single machine gun bullets can take this engine out. Then we have well four spars on the upper and the lower sides. So I'm not quite sure if they are the same spars, and I'm not quite sure if they give you any sort of more durability. It didn't really feel like that, um, but for sure they are a bigger hit area. Um, however, there are no fuel tanks in the wings, as far as I can tell. And there are the two machine guns per wing in the middle of the wing. So this is where we have to go with it. There you can see the modifications. 250 or two 100 kilogram bombs. That's all. And as you can see, I've flown it a little bit. So those are the belts. Nothing special. Really nothing special. This is the message of this plane. Um, I would fly some other planes. If it comes to the firepower against enemy fighters, you have the lag 3.8 with a 20mm or the 3.11 also with a 20mm. They have even rockets. You have the I-16s, the I-15s, they are dedicated fighters. You have some really nice sturdy bombers, the SB to M line um, with a lot of variants. Some of them were definitely removed. You have the AR-2 fantastic plane. Um, you have even stronger uh, attackers with the Yak-2 KABB. Um, so this plane is definitely nothing special. On the other hand, I have to say, well, at least it doesn't really um, give you an overpowered plane that would ruin the matchmaker at lower tiers. And I've really seen the amount of players playing this plane drop a lot. So in my opinion, it's not really something worth picking up for performance reasons. Rather for having another collector's item in your hangar to be proud of, but it's up to you if it's really worth. For me personally, uh, uh, if I wouldn't be that of a hardcore collector, I would say no. There are just simply better options already in the tech tree. So let's prove it with some gameplay. So I have now prepared a few scenes for you to really show what the plane is all about. And we are here attacking some AI Heinkel 111s and you can see 
the machine guns are effective they are really brutal however the second you get hit um, you might return a hit to the engine and immediately the oil has a oil leak and our engine will ultimately die however we pummel the Heinkel 111s and I think it's very easy to lead those machine guns to stay on target and you have enough ammunition to really um, deal a lot of damage to them however they overheat if you stay um, on target as long as I do here now this was the very first battle that I had and now my machine guns are overheated and I just have one left so this is now um, enough to show off the capabilities my aim is here far from perfect we set them on fire and we get another kill so this is it now with the guns the problem here is Let's see, where is this Heinkel 51, what we can do about him. I try here my best with the gunner. And I personally have a problem with the view. Um, it's blinding a little bit. But yeah, there go two Heinkel 111s down. And now my machine gun is overheated. And this poor guy has a lot of bad lead. But you at least can outrun German biplanes. Now I deliberately turn into him to keep him on my tail this is just for testing you know and i think it was worth showing i hope that my gunner has reloaded yep there he goes and now i want to level out and to just gun him down before he can gun down me so again i'm way too fast and there i get some good hits in come on die there we go so the gunner it's debatable. I mean, compared to some other nations, uh, 7.62, 7.7 or 7.9 to gunners, I think this Russian gunner is machine gun for machine gun, the most capable one. But you should not really rely on it. This is the message. So you can see I took a lot of damage from the machine gun bullets. Normally German 7.92 on fighters or biplanes are some of the strongest with the universal belt in my books so you can take a little bit of damage however your overall handling then just goes into the trash ton right away now the other thing is you actually have a bomb site on this plane um, but i tried to get the light tank in dive bomber fashion and um, let's see how it goes um, i finished the battle with just, how to say it, um, yeah, landing in the woods. So we destroyed the light tank. I tried to drop the bomb, but it didn't go off because of a lag spike. Doesn't really matter. That's the end of this battle. Let's go into this fight. And again, I'm, you know, doing it very, very aggressively here. I'm going after the JU-88. And I want to go into a dive. And I want you to um, have a look at the speed. And how the lockup is because it's quite excessive so you don't have air brakes on this plane and this is kind of a hindrance so I should have gone into a much more shallower dive and now the lockup hits really hard and I cannot even maneuver with this German heavy uh, with medium bomber which has some fantastic handling well it's the C variant that's actually the heavy fighter variant um, and you can see I cannot turn into him, a BF-109 comes out of the clouds and I just need to avoid him. And the second I go up, you maneuver a little bit and then that's it. That's all the maneuvering that you have. So it feels a bit like an IL-2. Um, heavy, uh, not really nice and uh, always in danger of getting you know, into a maneuvering fight with a BF-109 and he just yeah and then I couldn't pull up so all the energy is gone I'm bled out and if he would take a loop if he would be in a one versus one he would easily have me and there is nothing that I can do about it and this was with bombs but you know the drop of the bombs do not really benefit you that much in performance I have to say it um, yes it increases it a little bit but it doesn't transform you into a Spitfire so in this case, I was lucky that a lot of my teammates were flying around and were um, casting this guy to back up. 
and watch this shot. This just proves the insane damage output and RNG sometimes of Russian 7.62s. At 900 meters nearly, I pulled the trigger, some hits, pilot snipe. <laughs> Can, can you believe it? Can you really believe it? What this guy was thinking? What was going through his mind? Aside from a bullet. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, this is the good giggle that I always have in Soviet aircraft. The next battle is now the last scene that I wanted to show you. So I go at nearly 3000 meters above the uh, combat zone. AAA is shooting at me. I'm doing some slight evasive maneuvers and um, yeah, try my best to avoid the damage. And this is really annoying. I think um, the SPAA or the AAA around the combat zone should, should be purely cosmetic. And now I have an oil leak. And there are now two things that I have to do. Um, either return to the battlefield or throw myself into the opposition. And I invested already a few minutes into getting here. And I already was convinced that a kill compilation would be the better thing to do. But it happened to me in every single battle that the engine was very, very quickly, very fast damaged and lost a lot of power. So what I'm doing here is something that I do not really recommend to just fly into the enemy. And this BF-109 has an altitude advantage, he keeps climbing, a heavy bomber pops up and another BF-109. Those are odds that you don't want to face. I fly into them nevertheless to see what I can do about him. Um, fly as I say, not as I do. So I have no problem going into a head-on with a BF-109 because I smoke his engine as easily as he would damage mine. He shoots at long distance. And, um, well, he tries to avoid, but then he gets set on fire. So, German fighters, when they try to avoid, they are still so predictable with their flight model. And, yeah, this B409 E1, I avoided him just, but he already has an energy and maneuvering advantage over me. My engine, well, it's on a timer to die. The other B409 has stopped burning. So this is something extremely annoying. Um, another aircraft shot at me. I came out of nowhere. It was another BF-109. I was lucky to not die there. My pilot is injured. I don't want to get into a head-on with a BF-110 and also not uh, potentially a German heavy fighter in the shape of a bomber. And I set the uh, BF-109 F1 on fire again. My gunner shoots for, shoots for a brief moment. I get the kill on the BF-109 F1, but it was the guy that I set on fire previously, so his engine was out if you had a close look at it. And now I'm rolling scissors with the BF-110. My engine is still not damaged and uh, I tried to get some hits into the BF-110 and uh, hit him successfully multiple times, but I just smoked one of his engines. I have to avoid the other BF-109 F1 now. and. Uh, yeah, he nearly got guns on me, or he actually did, and pummeled me some more. There is not that much that I can do. I'm just too slow at this stage. Even with full throttle, I wouldn't be that much faster. And um, watch this BF-110, what he's doing. He's now flying inverted, and this doesn't really look very healthy. He pancakes, giving me the second kill. And now I'm very much out of options. I've lost all my altitude, all my energy with full throttle. I like, try to get into the head-on, but now the plane sinks already down. I get a critical hit into this BF-109, but that's it for me. That's all she wrote. So I didn't get the kill on this BF-109 F1 at all. I just got an assist later on. I think all the kills that I got were down to the low battle rating and that some of the enemies didn't really... Um, fly that well compared to my usual opponents at higher tiers. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, give it a like. If you did, subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the plane. And as usual, we will see in the skies of War Thunder.